Well, hello there, guys, and welcome to the secrets to creating amazing transitions inside Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, for the next half hour, you're gonna have to do it with me, but no worries, we'll be looking at Adobe Premiere Pro most of the time. Now, if you've been searching previously for tutorials on YouTube about Premiere Pro or After Effects, you might have come across this face already because that's practically my job. I make tutorials about ViaVix, video editing, filmmaking, and everything in between with my small team, and I publish that to YouTube. So I'm super excited today to make this session here about Premiere Pro for Adobe Max. Now, I was invited here today by MSI, one of our channel sponsors, to talk about Premiere Pro, and that's why you can see their products here scattered around to me we got the p50 the brand new prestige and as well the creator z16 laptop right here i'm going to talk a little bit about them throughout the session but not too much because you guys are here to learn something new about transition so that is what we're going to start with straight away what i've got right here in my timeline are two clips we've got this beautiful grass right here and then we cut to these birds. Now that cut is already a transition. A transition doesn't always have to be something complicated with many effects. It can just be a simple cut, but it needs to be done right because this cut right here doesn't really say much. It's not really a good transition. And that is gonna be the essence of this session that you can create amazing transitions but through a very simple process. Now I hear you thinking, Jordi, I'm here to learn something new, something new technical in Adobe Premiere Pro. I know how to make cuts. So all right, I'll show you guys first how to create a very simple basic transition with some advanced techniques behind them. So what I wanna do here in my timeline is move clip number one, one track higher, and clip number two underneath that. Now with clip number one here selected on my timeline and heading over to the effects controls, what I can do here is animate the position so that it slides away and reveals the second clip here underneath. That is a very basic transition. So let's do that. I'm going to start here in the beginning here where clip number two starts and starts the animation by toggling the stopwatch right here. That creates a keyframe which holds the current value for the position. Then let's hold over further in time and I'm going to push that clip down. There we go, revealing the one underneath. Now let's play this back and you'll notice that the animation will play between these two keyframes. We've got a transition. It is a good transition, in my opinion not. It looks very static, very rough, and that's because this animation is linear we're gonna have to make a smooth animation. And here's how that's done. First of all, if we're going to collapse the position property, you can see here the animation curve. And we'll notice here that actually that, that line goes in this block and that reveals that the animation starts very instantly. There's no acceleration or anything of that. It's not smooth. So here is how we can actually make that smooth. For starters, we can right click on that keyframe go over to Temporal Interpolation and choose Ease Out. Now, the reason we don't choose Ease In is because the animation plays from the left to the right. So the animation goes out of that keyframe on the right side. So that is why we choose Temporal Interpolation, Ease Out. For that last keyframe, we could choose Ease In as the animation comes into that keyframe, but because we are at the end of the clip, we don't need to do that. We can leave it as linear. So now you can see here that automatically that curve has been changed and we don't instantly start anymore with an animation. It goes slowly up, it accelerates. So let's play this back. And that is already looking a ton better, but we can make that look even more better. You see, the lower this line here is, the slower the animation goes. The higher it is, the faster it goes. So here's what happens. I can actually pull on this lever from that keyframe and change how that curve looks. And right now we're creating this ramp right here. So as you can see, it sticks to that bottom line right here for a pretty long time. So it goes super slow and then it accelerates. It's going higher, higher, higher. And that is that velocity, it's going faster. So let's play this back one more time now. You can see now that it starts super slow and then it speeds up and it slides out of the shot. This transition looks now a ton better, but it's not looking great yet, and that is because it is missing details. Again, one of those secrets. You see, transitions are all about the details. What do you do with them? How do you, can you make them more dynamic? And in this case, if we look at that animation, there is movement into it, but we don't see any motion blur in that clip. 
You see, when you wave your hands, we have motion blur. You see, it's not really sharp, my hand anymore. It, it, it's, it's, it's all blurry, and that's because I'm waving it. I'm, I'm creating motion, just like my animation right here. Now, unfortunately, there's no motion blur option right here with the motion property. So we're going to have to work through an effect. And that effect is called the transform effect. So I'm going to disable my animation here and reset the entire motion property. And then in my effects library, I'm going to look for the transform effect. And it's right here. And I'm going to drag that over to clip number one. Go to the beginning. And as you can see here, the transform effect has the exact same properties as we have with the motion properties. Only here, we have something extra, and that is called the shutter angle. And that is going to create that motion blur for us. So let's create that same animation that we did previously for the position. Create a keyframe, go forward in time, push that clip down. There we go. Expands that property, and I'm going to pull on this lever right here to create that same arc, make it accelerate. All right, and now let's go to that shutter angle option. By the way, guys, the shutter angle is the same as shutter speed. With digital cameras, we talk about shutter speed, where you would set 1 60th of a second if you're shooting at 30 frames. That gives you natural motion blur. With film cameras back in the day, we had this rotating disc, and so we would speak of a shutter angle. And 180 degree is always a natural motion blur. So that is why we're going to set 180 degree in here. And look at that, guys. We have motion blur, a natural motion blur that adapts to the speed of the animation. So also that motion blur increases over time. Now let's play this back and look at our animation. Well, isn't that looking great, guys? We've just created a transition that looks very smooth and with motion blur. Two very important things motion blur, and smooth animations. By the way, guys, if you're wondering why my playback is so smooth with these 4K shots and effects applied to them, well, that's for starters because I am working here with the MSI P50, which is a workstation desktop, a beautiful desktop, something that you don't put underneath your desk, but on top of your desk, and it comes with killer hardware inside. We get the NVIDIA RTX 3060 graphics card and the latest 11th generation Intel CPU inside. So that is giving me that power. But also, I am working with effects that are GPU accelerated. You can actually see that right here on that icon next to every effect. So if you're looking for an effect in your effects library, try to look for something that has that icon next to it, as it will drastically improve your playback. Usually, you'll be able to do that in real time. All right, let's take what we've just learned to the next level and head over to the next sequence. I've got two shots here again. This time, I want to create this rolling transition between them. Now, because this rolling transition goes from one clip over to the other, I can't lay them on top of each other because both clips need to have that animation. Now, in order to make it myself easy, I'm going to work with an adjustment layer. So to do that, we're going to have to go over to the project panel. And from here, simply right click in the project panel go over to New Item and choose Adjustment Layer. The default settings are good, so let's press OK, and I'm going to drag that on top of my two clips. Now, this Adjustment Layer is a nothing layer. It doesn't show anything, it doesn't do anything, but we can apply effects to it and make it do something. So I'm going to trim this Adjustment Layer here so that it sits over this cut, because this here is my transition point that cuts. Now, let's head over to the Effects Library, and I'm going to search for the offset effect, which is right here, and drag that over to the adjustment layer. Now, this offset effect allows me to roll my clips, as you can see. So let's animate that. I'm going to start in the beginning of my adjustment layer, create a keyframe for the shift center two, and head over to the end of my adjustment layer. And let's just kind of like move this here to the right side, make that roll a couple of times and bring it back to default. And like we've seen before, we want to create smooth animation. So let's expand that property. And I'm going to pull here on this lever for both of the keyframes because we are seeing the end of the animation this time. And I'm creating this curve right here, this ramp, where it goes super slow. And then here at the transition point, right here in the middle, it goes super fast. And then it goes slow back to the default position. So let's play this back and see how that transition looks. We've got this tree, and then the rolling will start, 
slowly it speeds up and then it ends back to this beautiful waterfall a transition that looks great it's super smooth but again it's missing something and that is that motion blur now unfortunately there is no offset effect with motion blur so we're gonna have to create that motion blur ourselves which we can easily do with the effect called directional blur this is going to be your go-to effect or blur effect whenever you want to create that fake motion blur I'm going to start here in the beginning where that blur length has to be zero because there is no motion yet in the beginning. Right here, we are at a maximum point in the beginning. And so we want to increase that blur length like a tiny bit. So let's put that to, I don't know, like, like 40. And then bring that back to, on the end here, to zero. And of course, we want to follow that same animation curve here as well. So for the blur length, we're going to create that same curve. Pull the first one up like that. And the last one also pull it out like this. So we can see that we have that same ramp here going on right now that we have here with the offset. And there's one last thing to do, and that is, of course, define the direction of the blur. It's currently set vertical. We don't want that, so let's change that to 90 degree so that that sits vertical. And now let's play back our very smooth and cool transition. Isn't this looking amazing, guys? A beautiful roll transition, something that we've created ourselves, a custom transition with motion blur and smooth animation. All right, so these were already two of my secrets. Pay attention to smooth animations and add that motion blur in there whenever you're creating a transition. And it doesn't have to be this one. This applies to any transition that you can come up with. We're on fire, guys. You're learning so many new things, which is amazing. Now, if you're wondering where these shots are coming from, they're actually coming from my trip to Iceland. I shot these a couple of years back, and you can also download these clips as well so that you can try out these same transitions with the same clips that I'm doing right now. And you can also download the project files so that you can have a look into the curves that I created here inside Premiere. By the way, guys, if you're considering to go to Iceland, which I can highly recommend, it's a beautiful country, definitely look out for a workstation laptop like the Creator Z16. I've been working with this now for a little over a month, and it is a pure pleasure to work on this laptop. It is a workstation laptop, meaning that you get similar hardware as in the P50 right here, giving you tremendous power. Editing 4K footage on this thing is a true blessing. It goes super smooth, guys. Plus, on top of that, you get a touchscreen display as well, and this is super color accurate, meaning that this is built for creative tasks such as color grading and doing graphical stuff on it, which is quite amazing. Definitely a laptop worth checking out if you're traveling a lot. So uh, thank you, MSI, for that one. I'm really enjoying it. Now, back to the transitions. I've got a third sequence right here, which is called animation movement. And we're going to do something very basic here, but it's something that I believe is very important when it comes down to transitions. So we have a cut right here, a very simple cut from this little uh, river here with this uh, cabin onto it. And we just cut to a follow-up shot where we have my fiance there stands on the rocks of Iceland. And we have this specific movement going on in here. This is a camera movement. The camera goes upwards. So what we want to do now is just kind of link these two shots together with a simple cut to create a simple transition. So what I'm going to do here is select my clip number five, and I'm going to go over to my motion property, and I'm actually going to create an animation for the position. Create a keyframe, go a little bit forward in time, and I'm going to move this down just a tiny bit. And that way now I'm following the movement going onto the next shot. Of course, you wanna make sure that your keyframe here ends on the end of the clip. And like before, we're going to make this smooth. So pull on that lever so that it starts very slowly and then speeds up as we go into the next shot. And you can see here how beautifully this transitions with this very simple trick. We just match the two movements of two clips. That's it. Now, of course, we do see this black border here on top. In order to fix that, we're going to have to increase the scale a tiny bit of that clip. So let's do that until we don't see that black border anymore. There we go. Looking good. So now let's play this back. We're going from that river here with those beautiful orange colors in the front from the sunlight. And we transition over to the next clip. It is very subtle. And it feels like that first clip also had a camera movement. And that is what those transitions are all about. Subtle things that make two clips join together. That's a good transition. All right, on to the next thing, expectations. 
Another way to create transitions is by working on expectations. What we have right here are four clips of rocks and waves. We have a certain expectation. If we see a wave, we expect that the next shot is also going to be a follow-up of that wave. That is an expectation. And so we can work on that expectation. First, we see this wave here coming through. Now that wave kind of goes behind that rock, so it's disappearing. We are kind of losing momentum there. So what I want to do here is trim that clip off so that we still kind of see a part of that wave right here, which is important. Then let's drag the second clip here next to it so that we don't have a gap. And we can now literally see that these two clips flow together with that wave. We are expecting a wave in the next shot and that movement continues, that wave continues going forward. Then there's one problem here occurring and that is the direction of the movement doesn't match. So here we have the wave going to the right side in our shot and then suddenly we cut to a wave going to the left side in the shot to the other side. So we want to fix that. If we match the movement like we've seen previously, those two shots will join better together as well. So let's do that. In the effects library, we can search for the flip effect. And we're going to drag the horizontal flip to, let's say, the first clip right here. We can choose which one. And that is just going to flip that wave over, making the direction of that wave go from the right to the left the same as in a follow-up shot. All right, so that wave now is crashing into the rocks. Beautiful. I'm going to uh, bring the third clip closer here. And we can see here as well that that wave is now also going further with that crashing. It follows up. We're meeting the expectations. And so finally, we can cut to a last shot of, again, those waves going up. We are expecting to see that crash. Now, all of these shots were from different waves different rocks they don't actually match together but because we are meeting the expectations in the edit they do match up nobody is going to notice that these are different waves or different rocks now one important thing guys here with this transition or or cut is that we see the wave here crashing but we cut to a shot where we don't see the wave yet we want to retain or keep that momentum in there so that is why i'm going to trim that clip at the point where we do see that wave. So let's trim that a little bit, close the gap, and now you'll notice that these two shots transition much better because we see the wave instantly and then it goes back down. So let's have a look at this right here, guys. A small sequence where every cut is a transition because these shots have something in common. They meet expectations and they follow the same direction, the same movements, which is great. All right, moving on, I see that we don't have too much time left, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. The next thing is point of interest, something super important, guys. We have my fiance again here walking in the distance, and we cut to this bird right here. And this could be a transition through something called point of interest. Basically, in this shot right here, we're looking at her, at Kim, because she is moving. The audience is drawn to that point. So I'm going to mark that point, and we can do that with the guides and the rulers. We can find this plus icon here to bring up the button editor of our of the program monitor. And I'm going to drag in two things in here, the show rulers and the show guides. And then press OK. What I can do now is enable my rulers like that. And this allows me to drag out these guidelines and bring them onto Kim right there because that way I can mark where the audience is looking at. So for the next shot, I want to make sure that Bert also sits on that cross. Very simple. I just select that clip, head over to my effects controls, scale that clip a little bit up. By the way, guys, if you select the motion property here, we can actually drag the clip here in the program monitor to the right position and also scale it up from there. So I'm just going to do that. All right, let's disable the guides for a moment and let's play this back. We are looking at this point and to make this work even better, I'm going to enlarge the program monitor. We are looking at this point and we cut to a next shot where the audience is still looking at that point, the point of interest, and we flow over to that bird. We are matching the point of interest, again, creating a transition. Even if it's as simple as a cut, this is a good transition, guys. Let's play that back one more time. Have a look at it, how these two clips flow together. Beautiful bird. All right, moving on to the last example. We have three clips in here. We got a horse. We have, again, my fiance in the water. And then finally, we've got a cheap. Now, these three clips all have something in common. 
They're all animals. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> they all have movement into them, a specific movement which we can link together. First of all, we've got this horse, and that horse, it's turning its head around. And look at the next shot, we've got Kim turning her head around too. And we can use that movement to link these two clips together, creating a transition. So let's cut in that movement, because we don't want to show one movement, stop, then go to the next clip, start again that movement. No, that's not how that transition works. We have to cut into that movement, again, creating that expectations. If we cut here, trim that clip in that movement, we are expecting that in the next clip that movement continues, just like the waves. So close that gap, the horse is turning its head, so we also want to start this clip right here where Kim is turning herself around. So let's trim that as well and close the gap. And now you'll notice that these two movements here continue. Let's play that back. Look how beautiful these two clips now join together with that movement. And then finally is the follow-up shot of that sheep. We are looking at two faces right here, that of Kim and then following up of that sheep. So we have something in common again. We are meeting that expectation. And we could do this a little bit better by again working with that point of interest. So I'm going to take back my guides here and bring that onto Kimmer face, ideally onto her eyes. And for a sheep, we want to match that up. So select that clip, scale it up a little bit and bring the eyes of that sheep as well here on that cross. Now let's have a look guys how these two here transition. It's just beautiful. A simple cut, but because of that point of interest, it works great. And those were my secrets to creating amazing transitions. It doesn't matter how many effects or how crazy and complex your transition is, if you don't imply these basic rules, they're never gonna be amazing. So in your transitions, make sure that they meet expectations so that they follow up on each other. Make sure that your point of interest is at the right point and that you match the movement of your two clips. And when you do decide to create animations, make sure that they are smooth through the keyframes and that they have motion blur either through the transform effect or with the directional blur. Now it's been a real pleasure for me giving this session here on this beautiful MSI Prestige Monitor. This one here is also from the Creator Series. So it is built for creative tasks, guys. If you are looking currently for a new monitor, definitely consider the brand new Prestige as well from MSI. And if you're looking for a new desktop, the P50 might be something for you, as well as the Z16 Creator Laptop right here. Definitely make sure to check out these products. Again, these are built for those creative tasks. You do your color grading and everything on this monitor. Beautiful IPS 4K display, very color accurate, 95% coverage of the DCI-P3 color profile, which is something huge. And of course, we get all those juicy options like HDR and everything. So go check that out, guys. And definitely make sure to go check out myself as well, which you can do on YouTube. Just search for Cinecom. That is my YouTube channel. Or you can also find me on Instagram, cinecom.team is the account over there. So go check us out and make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to see brand new tutorials about Premiere, After Effects, filmmaking and everything in between every single week. Thank you so much for watching guys and I really hope that you're going to enjoy the other sessions here at Adobe Max as well. And as always, stay creative.